So hey there, everybody, and welcome to the channel. As always, thanks for stopping by and hanging out for a few. My name is Rich Charpentier. I'm the channel host. And normally here, we're talking about building our small drone business, uh, doing imaging work, 360 degree images, video, and anything else that goes into building your small drone business. Now, I've been missing from YouTube for a couple weeks, I realized. It's time flies really quickly, and I apologize for that. Uh, I've been missing because I've been putting together two new courses um, that we'll be talking about here on YouTube in a couple of weeks, most likely. I've got one new class that's already in beta, and then we've got another new class that was recently released on utilizing web ODM for beginners. Now, last week while I was working on my courses here, um, I got a call from one of our regular clients. They needed a new uh, job area flown for them. And I've started integrating some new tools for my flight planning that I wanted to share with you. I've talked about it a little bit here in previous videos, but specifically today, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about utilizing QGIS. So this is a GIS system that is open source, and it's been helping me with my flight planning. And I'm going to show you how and why and, you know, what's behind it. So this isn't a full uh, video on using QGIS but it's going to get you started with it. So this is a free open source platform that you can download today and start playing with as well. So let's go ahead and take a look here. I'm switching camera views really quick. So what's up on screen right now is the Yavapai County Interactive Tax Map. If you're a regular follower here, you've probably seen me looking up tax parcels previously when clients get in touch. So this particular client got in touch, like I said, last week. Um, looking for a flight from us, which we were able to do for them. But I want to take you through the process. So they got in touch with me. They gave me a parcel number. So I'm going to go over to search here. I'm going to go to parcel numbers and 202-03029A. And as you can see, this was auto filling. So it remembers my search previously. So I'm just going to hit search on this and it's going to bring us in to a very oddly shaped property. This is about 20 acres. So these particular clients wanted some video flights in here. So I didn't need to set up for 2D or 3D modeling. I wasn't using Ground Station Pro or Drone Harmony. I was just setting this up with Litchi to give myself an idea of the property boundaries, where I should be flying, where I should be capturing. So very unique location to be sure. And um, the layout here is also unique, but we've got rolling hills and mountains in here, a wash, a creek. So a unique looking place. Now, one of the things that I can't do with the Yavapai County interactive tax map, I'm interacting, uh, so it is an interactive tax map, but um, one thing that I can't do is export shape files from this because a lot of the tools we use for flight planning, Litchi, Ground Station Pro, Drone Harmony, um, you know, we can uh, take a KML file and import it to these and help us set up our flight apps quicker. But um, we can't do that from this website here. So I can't export this shape file because what would be really nice right here is just export these little boundaries here and um, then upload them to whatever device I have. So by the way, I'm moving over to grab an iPad for after once we've got this set up here. And um, so no exporting here. So what do I do? Well, one option now is to use QGIS. So it used to be that I would manually do things on the tiny little screen, or I would use Litchi's Mission Hub to a certain extent. And um, now, since we've gotten a hold of QGIS and started using it for the past couple of months, uh, QGIS is a great way to actually generate a shape file and then export the shape file to the device that you want to use. So let's go right here. I'm just double clicking this. And so welcome to the QGIS interface, by the way. I'm just going to drag this over really quick for you. So this is QGIS on a Mac Mini M1. And like I said, this is a geographical information service. And we can actually generate maps and models on this as well. And we've got a lot of tools available to us. But when you first open up QGIS, this is what it looks like. And similar on the uh, Windows side of the house as well. So we can utilize this if you've ever used ArcGIS. Uh, if you are into survey and engineering, you probably know about ArcGIS. But there are a lot of tools in QGIS that make it pretty comparable to ArcGIS. 
And right now we've just got this blank screen. We've got nothing going on here. Well, up on the toolbar and these uh, these tool icons are a little small, so I do apologize for that. Let's see if I can zoom in on this and you will see this. But up top, I have a little globe called Quick Map Services. So when I first started working with QGIS, one of the things I said was, how do I get maps? Well, if you do a simple search, uh, maps for QGIS, you're going to find a lot of information out there. And one of the things is that there are plugins available for us to get a hold of different maps. So up under plugins here, let's zoom in on that one as well. And so right up on the plugins bar, we can manage and install plugins. So I'm going to go ahead and click that really quick. And I am just waiting. So it takes a moment for this to come up and it's searching out on the web for us. So right now I've got something uh, installed here and we've got several things that are checked off, including one thing called Quick Map Services. So how did I get this? Well, under the plugins, if I click on all, it's actually showing me all of the available plugins for QGS. So there's a lot of tools available to us immediately um, utilizing QGS. And one of the tools that I found out about through a quick web search on Google, hey, gotta love the net, right? Was that there is this tool called Quick Map Services. Quick Map Services gives us access to a lot of base maps. So I'm gonna close this plugins really fast. And what we're gonna do, let's pretend that I just added that plugin, that Quick Map Service. And so let's go back again to that little globe right there. And on that little globe, I'm gonna click it. And now these are all the map services we have available to us here. So you can see Google right here. We could do a Google hybrid, Google labels, Google road. You know, um, let's go ahead and grab Google road. So now we see the entire map of the globe, but if we start zooming in here, and we start zooming in further into Arizona. So I'm just zooming in. By the way, on the left-hand side is where that layer is, that uh, Google Road layer for us right there. So we have layers like Photoshop has layers and other photo editing programs have layers. Um, GIS systems have layers too, because we can stack Google on top of ESRI, on top of what we draw out there. So um, whenever you're looking for what you've added to a map, just go take a look over in your layers. So I can zoom in further. And rather than just manually zooming, I also added a second plugin and it's called OSM Place Search. And that's for open street maps. And I have that plugin right over here. And you can actually type in search criteria. You know, like if you were doing a search on a Google map. I'm gonna go ahead and hit return here. And looks like I'm not getting People's Valley, Arizona. So this particular map is not doing it for me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and remove that layer, that Google Road. And instead of Google Road, what I've been using for my work here is ESRI. And I've been using the ESRI topos. Now, let's, uh, let's try this again here. And it's looking like, hey doesn't want to cooperate with us. Let's just see if it'll pull up People's Valley. And yes, it will. So right over on here, I just had to retype in here, People's Valley, Arizona. I'm going to double click on one of these and it actually shows me the entire area. Now, what's really nice, we're familiar with the People's Valley area. So this is pretty simple for me. We're looking for a uh, up and the network complained just now. So by the way, this being an open source platform, sometimes we'll have a little glitch or hiccup here. So I've got a little bar up here. I'm going to close all of those complaints. And what we were looking for was Model Creek Road. And here is Model Creek Road. And here's what's really interesting. That's that strange shaped property that we were just looking at on the Yavapai County tax map. So see how this curves up, comes down. I didn't have to do much searching at all, and I could have searched on the address too, but I already know, I'm so familiar with this one at this point, that this is in fact the property we're looking for. Now, what's really great here, you might not see this so well, so I will zoom in here. So we've got Model Creek Road here, which is part of that parcel. And 
in here, I'm going to zoom this and I'm hoping that you can see these straight lines here. These straight lines are the tax parcel map. So this is the tax parcel map represented on the ESRI data. And this is exactly it. So I'm going to just zoom this back out. And so I have the parcels here for me. What does that mean? That means I can make a shape file here. And when we make the shape file, we can export it afterward and upload it to our uh, iPad or Android or upload it to a web service like um, Drone Harmony's web service or Litchi's web service. But bottom line, I have found the same parcel. And now I can block this parcel out by creating a shape file. And so how do we do that here? Well, once again, it's up on the upper toolbar. And let's zoom in on this really quick. So this button right here, which is all small when it's zoomed out, is a new shape file layer. So that's, I'm going to click on that one because I would like a new shape file. Now I need to give it a name. So let's call this Model Creek YT for YouTube. And now I am going to put this in a folder somewhere. So I have a series of folders for my QGIS. So here we go. I've got a QGIS projects. Let's make a new folder here and let's call it YT QGIS for YouTube uh, QGIS. So I'm going to create that one and let's call this YT QGIS for the layer as well. Let's save that. All right. Now let's take a closer look at this. So we're making a new shape file. We have put it into a folder. We've given it a name. We need to tell it what type of shape file it is now. So we're going to go with polygon because we're going to actually draw out a polygon to make our shape file. Now this might sound a little complex, but as you do this a couple of times, you'll become very used to the QGIS interface and generating your shape files. Now I'm going to give that new field a name, and we're just going to call that YouTube QGIS as well. And let's say OK. So now let's look over on the left hand side of the QGIS interface, shall we? Back over to layers. You'll see we have a new layer right here called YT QGIS. That's what we just made. We made that layer. And then below that, we've got that topo map. So now we're ready to do something with the layer. What are we going to do with the layer? We're going to overlay our shape file. So up on that same toolbar, where we picked, there it is right there, where we picked that we were going to be doing a new shape file. Over here, we've got an editor. So we've got a little edit button that looks like a pencil, and I'm going to click on that. When I click on it, it gives me a couple of options to the left and to the right. And what I'm interested right here, once we're in the editor mode, is add a polygon. So we can add that polygon that's going to be our shape file. So I'm going to select add a polygon, and now I'm going to go and click out. Now, by the way, using something like, let's say, Ground Station Pro, for instance. In Ground Station Pro, for me to get this right, I actually had to go onto my iPad and tap these things out. I had to tap the corners in. And doing that on the iPad, there's always an opportunity to fat finger things and really screw it up. So. Once I've traced this out, so you can see our parcel here, um, it pops up a feature attributes. We can't do anything with that one. I'm just saying OK to it. But now we've created the shape file that we're after. So this is awesome. We now have a shape file that we can export from here. And we can actually load to one of our smart devices, be it the iPad or be it one of my iPhones. And actually, I'm going to grab an iPhone. And we're just going to take this bad boy off a of charge here. And I'm also going to take it off of do not disturb. So if we do have the phone ringing after, I'll apologize for that at that point in time. But so we've got the shape file built. Let's go take a look here. Looks pretty much the same. I'm not using this for measurements or anything. This is just to give myself an idea of where I should and should not be flying for this particular flight. And so I am ready to go with this. I would like to put this onto um, my iPhone, let's say. So 
over here on the right hand side again under the layers we have that yt qgis if i right click on that and go down i have an option to export things i'm going to export this feature as and the first thing it offers me is a kml so there we go that's fantastic um what do i want to call this let's call it yt uh, qgis so once again I'm just giving it the YouTube QGIS, and I'm going to throw this one out onto my desktop here, just so that it's really easy to access for us. And so this is going to be a KML labeled YT QGIS, and I'm going to say OK to this. And up on the top bar, it now says to me that it exported successfully. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and minimize both of those things, and let's look right here. There I go. I have a YouTube QGIS KML now. I could load this into Google Earth. Let's say, you know, let's do that. I'm just going to double click this really quickly. And we're going to see Google Earth is popping up. So just by double clicking that KML file, uh, it's actually going to bring me in to the shape file. Look, there it is. So it is popping up on my, um, on my Google Earth. Sorry, I blanked there for a sec. And so that is basically the property. So Google Earth opened that really quick, really easy. I'm going to go ahead and don't save this. I just wanted to show you that. But since I'm running on a Mac, I can do a couple of things that are pretty slick here. I'm going to, number one, let's go ahead and let's share our screen here. All right. And what we're going to do is I am going to go down to share. And I'm going to go down to AirDrop. So from my computer, I can AirDrop files to my iPhone or iPad or other computers. So what I'm going to do here really quick, I've just pulled up my iPhone so that we can actually see the iPhone. And it's connected through screen mirroring. So I'm going to go ahead and exit myself out of there. And now I'm going to take a look over. We've got that YTQGIS KML file. And one of the really great features on Apple is the fact that we can do sharing through Dropbox. So I can send things over to my other computer, to my phone, to my iPad, and I'm um, utilizing Dropbox so it can quickly exchange information between machines. We're going to do an airdrop here. And on the airdrop, we're going to do the iPhone. So I am now airdropping that KML file to my iPhone. And I want you to see what happens here when we get this done. I'm going to click on Done really fast. And on my iPhone screen, it's asking me, hey, what do you want to open this with? So we can open it with Map Pilot Pro. We can open it with Google Earth, which we just showed. We could use Avenza Maps. That's another mapping application on my iPhone. Or I can put it in my files. What I'm going to do, so I've got the iPhone right here. I'm going to tap Map Pilot Pro. And so right now I've got Map Pilot Pro on uh, my iPhone here. And Map Pilot Pro knows, hey, I work with KML files. So it tells me the import was successful and that now we have um, this new shape file that's been imported. I'm going to say OK. And if we look at the lower left hand corner and click on File Manager, and it tells me the things that I have in File Manager, but um, things are going to be deleted. And I'm going to say OK to that. And what I want you to see here right now is yt qgis so today is march 22nd let's uh let's go make sure up here yeah it's march 22nd so i now have this kml file which i can use to plan a new mission so let's take a look at that we've got yt qgis set up i'm going to hit done and now i'm going to say i want to do a new mission and what's really cool here is that map pilot pro says oh here's that kml for you so there we go. We have got the shape file traced out. So if I was planning on utilizing Map Pilot Pro, for instance, and let's say we wanted to fly a grid pattern to make a 2D or 3D model. Well, I can go in here and tap this out for our model area. So I just did a double tap to get our little purple dot. And now I'm just going to tap a couple of these out. I'm not doing this perfect right now. Um, so I do apologize for that, but uh, let's see here. I want to bring this guy down here. We can start moving these around as we see fit. 
There we go, but we want to pull that one up there. So you're getting the idea here of how I'm laying this thing out. I forgot MapPilot uh, plays games with where the buttons are. I'm just dragging some things across. We're going to get this right before we ever think about doing a flight at this location, of course. So I'm just tapping and dragging, tapping and dragging to start getting the coverage for this area. We're getting pretty close here, but still not quite there. I'm going to drag this one out, and we're going to bring this right up to here, because that's where it starts. Let's zoom this out a touch. So we're getting close, but I do need to go in and fine-tune things just a little bit, tweak them just a little bit. But, so from our export from QGIS, making our shape file, we immediately imported the shape file into one of the flight apps that I'm using. We could also do the same thing with Litchi's Mission Hub as well. Litchi's Mission Hub will let you feed in a KML file. So let's check that out. Let's get out of um, let's get out of MapPilot Pro here, and let's actually also stop with the screen mirroring. Okay, there we go. Stop the mirroring, and that window is now gone. So I still have the KML file here, and let's go grab a web browser and let's go to Litchi Mission Hub. And on Litchie's Mission Hub, I'm already logged in. And what we're going to do here is I would like to make a new mission for Litchie. And I'm going to import. Now I have to choose my file. Remember, we put that one out on the desktop. So let's look for that. There it is, YTQGIS. I'm going to open that. And I'm going to treat views as waypoints. Import this new mission. And it's telling me I don't have elevation data here right now, so I don't have a digital terrain model, and that's okay. But take a look at this layout. This layout is the same as what we saw on the Avapai County tax maps and then what we created on QGIS. So I could do a little fine tuning with this, set it up for the flights we're going to do, set it up for the video that we're going to do, and then load it to my iPhone or iPad, go out in the field, and execute the Litchi mission. And all of this came together because now with QGIS, I can actually map out these shape files, export the shape files to KMLs, and then share them with my flight apps. So this is just the beginning of our QGIS experience, but this is a quick way to make a shape file for use with your own flight apps that you're choosing to use. By the way, if I'd had the iPad hooked up to this, I also had Ground Station Pro on it and would have offered me Ground Station Pro as another option for uploading that KML file. So I hope this was an enjoyable and useful and not too long for you. It gets you started playing with QGIS. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Please feel free to also like and subscribe to uh, get notifications when new videos go up. And we won't be disappearing again for two weeks like we did recently. I'm still in the process of wrapping up the new classes. And also, you're very welcome to pop on by um, classes.azdrone.net to see what we have out there because the classes that we put up do help support this channel. You can also become a Patreon member and so those links are right down below in the show uh, above the show comments. So if you like what we do here and you'd like to see more behind the scenes information and be a participant on our weekly Zoom conference calls, check out our Patreon channel as well. Thanks as always for stopping in. I hope you enjoyed this one. And we'll see you all again really soon.